In 2012, Camperini's memoir, Caveat Emptor, was published by Pegasus Press. This landmark book that caused a storm of controversy in the art world in New York and London chronicles his career as a master painter and art forger that spanned over 30 years. Kemperini is still producing what he describes as the most deceptive fakes in the world. This is the first in a series of shows. Ken will begin by addressing the most frequently asked questions since the publication of Caveat Emptor. In future shows, Ken will give demonstrations of how he creates his masterful paintings and share many secret techniques he developed over the years as an art forger. Ken will also share his views on many topics, including the history of European and American painting, and give surprising insights on his favorite painters. Now, here is Ken Perini. Ken, many people have written in asking, why were you never indicted? Well, the answer to that is simple. The investigation was um, a, a shut down and covered up. Uh, it was simply too sensitive and it compromised too many important people in the art world. Uh, since the publication of my book, I have been contacted by uh, a number of people that I would consider art world insiders that wanted to share with me what they heard about this case and what, what they thought about it. Um, in a future show, I'm going to uh, devote a, a program to the subject. I'll go into it in detail of what has been passed on to me and the person that I was told I could thank for not being indicted. Ken, do you ever see your pictures turning up in the marketplace today? Yes, I see them. Uh, they turn up uh, unexpectedly like an old friend I haven't seen for, for years. And uh, it's, always, um, it's, a, it's always a delight. Uh, they turn up in catalogs and, and uh, magazines. Uh, recently, um, they say that the uh, a great fake will uh, needs to stand the test of time. Well, I, I recently saw a um, a herring that I painted uh, maybe 25 years ago or so, and it was sold in a major auction house. When I originally sold it, it was in the school of herring, you know, and um, got a few thousand dollars, I, I would imagine, uh, in those years. And uh, recently I saw it, uh, it had been upped. Uh, the world's expert on, on the artist had um, uh, now declared it to be an original by him, and uh, uh, it was an invention that I made up, and it uh, he even named the uh, the horse and the jockey. So I was uh, greatly flattered to see that, and um, and good to see that uh, that it uh, had stood up well over these years. But yes, I do see them, and uh, I would imagine I'll be seeing a lot more in the future. Have you known other art forgers? Uh, no, I've never um, met another art forger. Uh, I don't. Um, I think by the nature of the trade, it's uh, it's secretive. Uh, I would imagine that uh, the other ones out there are like me. We work alone. We um, uh, stay in the shadows and uh, content to uh, have our reward uh, by seeing our paintings being sold uh, at various venues, uh, auction houses or galleries or whatever, and enjoying the fruits of our labor. But I've never met uh, another forger. I think that um, I may be in a category uh, by myself in the sense that I have uh, specialized in period antique paintings that 
involves a lot of uh, what I call visual forensics. Uh, the cracking, the aging, the patina, the kind of support the pictures are painted on. Uh, it's a lot of work, a lot of study, and um, you have to really be devoted. I think Art Forgers today would probably target um, uh, easier subjects like the modern artists, uh, you know, like the Pollocks that came to light in the last couple of years that were fake where there's probably a whole lot more money in that and they're a lot easier to make. Uh, but my passion has always been for fine period painting, 18th and 19th century paintings. And um, I just, uh, even though I have dabbled in some of the moderns, but we'll get into that in another <laughs> program. But uh, no, I've never m met any others and uh, unless maybe in the future, uh, well, with all the publicity art forgery has gotten in the, in, in the press in the last couple of years and uh, novels that have been written on the subject that maybe we'll have an art forger's convention in the future and <laughs> we'll maybe meet up. But uh, as of now, uh, no, I, I haven't met another one. Ken, another frequently asked question is if you could do it over again, would you choose a different path other than forgery with your talent? And really, from an ethical standpoint, do you feel any remorse? Well, uh, to answer the last part of that question, no, I have no remorse uh, at all. Uh, I. What I do is my passion. I am fascinated by uh, period paintings and the way they are painted, and I, um, I, uh, I've always wanted to be a great painter, and uh, that's been my ambition in life, and, and that's my love. So no, I have no remorse uh, at all. Uh, would I uh, have directed my uh, talents in another direction? I think when I was young in New York City, um, I sincerely wanted to be a contemporary painter, uh, part of the uh, abstract impressionist movement. Uh, it just seemed that um, uh, events seemed to conspire against me and I couldn't um, quite get a leg up. Yes, there's a little bit of a, a, a regret there. Uh, it would have been exciting uh, to be part of that world. But uh, I, I think fate had uh, another plan for me, and I've had such an interesting life, uh, knowing the people that, uh, that helped me and um, facilitated facilitated my career and also developing the skill uh, that I did over 30 years, for me that has made up for everything. So I, uh, I think if I had to do it over again, it probably would be a hard decision, but in the end I wouldn't change anything. I've um, uh, become the kind of painter that I've always dreamed of and I believe that I'm carrying on the work of uh, painters that I revere, that um, I uh, emulate today in new creations that uh, I think they would be proud of if they were alive and could see the work that I'm turning out. So, no, I think this was my place in life and I'm happy to leave things as they are.